All right, so a couple months ago, I think, uh, the internet kind of blew up with these images, which were clearly static images, but were then represented in 3D. Um, here's a really good example of one of them. Um, so we're gonna look at how to make these uh, in this video. Um, this is a technique called 3D photography using context-aware layered depth in painting, um, which is a long, <laughs> it's a very long title to say. Um, what it can do is it can take uh, 2D images um, and it can understand sort of the depth mapping of them, or, you know, as most machine learning, it tries its best to understand uh, the depth mapping of an image um, and how they do this. So their network is made, obviously, of uh, basically you take a 3D image, um, you include its depth map, and then you can train on both of those, and then you can hopefully take a uh, single, like, realistic image um, and then reverse engineer it to get the depth map out of it. So what this is doing is essentially um, taking you know a singular image and it's able to do a little bit of depth mapping um, it probably does some what's the in painting part is it probably is then able to um, paint in some of the spaces that are not in the original image um, you know we've seen some in painting stuff before in like syngan and other techniques it's like pretty it's fairly common now although you clearly will see in this network that it's not the best you know um, so uh, you know this is pretty this is a pretty cool demo, um, and the notebook they made for it is pretty nice too. It like allows you to upload the image, it gives you back a mesh or a depth map plus some some demo videos. So I think it'll be kind of fun to play with. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, there is there are more videos here. There are papers, there are documentation, there's code, there's demos. There are many many things here. Um, so definitely recommend checking it out. It is a part of the CVPR, which is um, one of the bigger uh, machine learning. Um, this is particularly on com computer vision. It's a big conference, uh, and I think it was a couple months ago. I don't even remember. But anyway, um, this is a paper that was released during that time. So uh, I won't go into the paper here or talk any more about this, but let's just jump into the notebook and see how to use it. Um, so I've fixed the notebook a little bit. Uh, they were the original notebook. If you come from this link, actually, like they're installing too much stuff. Uh, so I removed a bunch of the installs. It still works fine. Um, so I'll link to my version, um, and then I'll link to the website. But just remember that my version is probably a little bit faster just to like install everything. Um, so let's go ahead and connect to our GPU here. Um, we're going to install uh, a couple of libraries. Um, I actually don't know. I know what MoviePie is for. I don't know what a lot of these other ones are for, but I know we need them. Uh, the other version has you reinstalling PyTorch and TorchVision, which takes forever and often needs requires a restart of your collab notebook. So thankfully, we won't have to do that in this version. That was pretty quick. Um, so we're going to now install the repo. And we're going to, I believe, download the, um, the pre-trained models. So this is one that like you don't really need to do training on. Um, you and I probably don't have thousands of 3D models plus their visual uh, like well-lit like renders um, lying around so thankfully uh, we're just going to use their depth model and I've actually found it works pretty well. So we're, in, uh, we're downloading like the color model which I believe is probably doing the in-painting the depth model which is going to give us a depth map um, probably some, an edge detection model and then probably the, the thing that puts it all together those are my guesses. Um, just based on the naming. Uh, we're gonna run this, which I just, it says it switches off screen rendering. Not sure exactly what it does, but apparently we need it, so let's just run it. Um, and now we're gonna upload a JPEG. So there's two ways to do this. Um, one is in our code over here. Um, if you go into your image, um, in your image folder is already a full, an image. I actually recommend removing this. Um, we don't need it and we don't want it to render because it'll just take extra time. Oh, I download it instead of deleting it, so let's delete it. Come on. Okay, that's a new error. There we go, it deleted, okay. Um, so again, we can actually just drag an image into um, this folder. Or the other technique is to run the cell, and when you run the cell, um, you will be given a place to upload a file. So if we just choose a file, one thing to note is that this this library requires a JPEG. Um, you can, if you dig into the code, you can kind of change it, but I think for this demo, it's fine if we just sort of stick with that. Um, I've also found that many of the images I would expect to work with it don't. Um, so just sort of be aware that like some images will struggle um, with this whole technique. So 
Um, I definitely recommend uploading a couple. Um, don't make them too large, although I think it might resize it. Um, but anyway, let's just try with a couple of these images and see how it goes. So one thing to note is that as you upload these, um, when all the images in the file are in this folder, um, when you run this next command, it will run over every image in this folder. So uh, just be aware that the more images that are in there, the longer it's going to take. Um, that's probably fine with these two images, but obviously if you have 20 images in there, just, just know it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, each of these will do create the, um, the depth map and other things, and then also create these demo videos. That's why I had to remove that, uh, that moon version, because there's already examples in here. So we're just going to run this. So this is working off of a config. Um, sometimes you pass in configs as arguments um, into the main. Uh, this particular library uses a .yaml file to uh, maintain a bunch of these. Um, you could probably go in and figure out what all these do. So for example, there's if you want just a particular video type, you could remove all the other options. Um, I've never really touched this. It seems fine to leave it as is. Um, but if you want to mess with it or understand what's going on here, you can probably play with these numbers a little bit. Um, it does look like there's a larger size, so it's probably scaling even large images down. Um, and actually, this is where it's looking for the image format. So if you do a PNG and you, for whatever reason, can't convert it to a, to a JPEG, um, you can switch this to PNG here. Um, I'm just going to leave it as JPEG. Um, but basically, it will only find images in your folder that match an extension. So if you, put, if you upload a PNG, it's actually just going to skip it. Um, OK, so let's run this. Um, there is a note here that it takes two to three minutes uh, or more, depending on available computing resources. I couldn't figure this out. For whatever reason, it's running on the CPU. I don't know if that's a requirement. I tried to get it to run on the GPU, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, just fiddling around with the, the network a little bit, um, the main.py PyTorch file. So um, it's probably slow because it's running on the CPU, and maybe it can't run on the GPU. But anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, I will spoil this and say that I already have done this particular model, so we can look at this one. Um, so we come in here. There are four video types. This one is the circle, which looks like it just produces a circle. Now you'll notice um, this is not a perfect example, right? Like there is clearly some stuff going on here in this corner. This is that in painting, right? It's like trying to paint in behind here, but it doesn't know where the edge sort of ends. Um, so if you look too closely at this thing, you will find issues, right? Like it sort of has found this edge, um, that sort of thing. So these aren't perfect, but they are like pretty cool in that like, you know, I would expect in a year or two, we might have even better edge detection for these issues and be able to really have some really cool video. This is the dolly zoom. So the dolly zoom um, does this cool thing where like the background uh, shrinks or like converges uh, in a really cool way. Um, there is the swing. And then there is just a traditional zoom in. And if you notice the difference between the, the, the zoom in and the dolly zoom is that the dolly zoom, the background, like zooms backwards. Um, for people who know cinema better than me, they can probably explain what's going on there. Um, so that's sort of what it produces. Um, let's see if we have produced any other videos here, if we've produced any other ones for this new one. Doesn't seem like it yet, um, which is fine. Um, so basically, you let this run for a little bit while, and your videos will show up in here. Um, and then you have the option of just clicking on one of them and downloading it, um, and that's about it. So uh, this is a pretty cool, like, really quick demo, um, and you don't really need that much, right? You need a single image, um, and you need to be able to follow instructions, and then you can have these, like, really interesting videos. Um, and I should also add that if you know how to use um, meshes or depth um, layers, uh, I guess what this is. I don't actually know what these things are, would be referred to as, um, but if you know how to use a, a a depth uh, map mesh or a depth map um, NumPy file, you can do some really, really cool things for it. I think I've seen other folks, you know, really sort of like playing with the camera effects a lot more. Um, it's a little bit out of, outside of my wheelhouse, but maybe one of you can let me know uh, how to go about doing that and I'll show that video next time. Um, cool. Thanks so much.